go to James chapter 3. In James chapter 3, he tells us this is all about words and our, our speech and how we live our life. I'm going to read through it quickly again. This is kind of a recap from last week. But in James chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, My brethren, so he's talking to Christians, be not many masters or teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation or judgment, a stricter judgment. For in many, way, in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Do you hear that? Yeah, let me read that again. If any man offend not in word. Okay. In other words, now that word offense is also understood and in some translations even says sin or make fault, trespass, these ideas. So if, if any man offend, doesn't break the rule, so to speak, in word, the same is a perfect mature man and able also to bridle the whole body. Now, do you hear that? If you don't offend in words, you can bridle the whole body. That means if you use the right words, you can get your body to go the direction you want it to go. Notice he said your whole body. That's your physical being. That's not your spirit. That's your body. And if you bridle your tongue and speak words of life, you can turn your body toward life. I don't care where you are. I don't care how far down you have sunk, both in the, in the physical, in your body of sickness or disease. You can turn that thing around. I could stand here all day giving you testimonies of people that have done that very thing just by changing the words coming out of their mouth. And, but I mean, Gordon Lindsay was one, dying of ptomaine poisoning, and he got the word of God into him and started believing the word of God and started saying, well, I guess I'm healed then, and started saying that. And within, I think it was two days, was completely well of ptomaine poisoning. They were expecting him to die. At least that's what they said it was, uh, it was from, was ptomaine poisoning anyway. And so Kenneth E. Hagan, same thing, dying of congenital heart disease right up here in McKinney. Lying on a deathbed, 17 years old, saw in the word of God, started saying what the word of God said about him. Got up and started acting healed, and guess what? Was healed. Lester Summerall did the exact same thing, dying of tuberculosis on his bed. Every morning his mom would come in and change the pillowcase because of the blood that would come out of his mouth during the night. And God actually showed him a vision of a huge Bible on one side of his bed and a casket on the other. And he said, today you're going to choose one of these. And he said, I choose the Bible. And he said, okay, then get up and go preach. And he got up and started going and preaching and preaching the word of God and lived to 83 years old, I think it was. And so every, you can turn your whole body around. I can't say that strong enough. Wherever you're at, listen, it's good to get hands laid on you, get life put into you, and that's like a turbocharge and get you fixed up. But let me tell you, if you don't change your mouth, you'll be right back in that healing line again before too long. Why? Because your words will be a snare to you. See, God takes your words and brings blessing. The devil listens, and whenever you use a word that somehow empowers him by speaking death or sickness or disease or defeat or whatever, then he uses it and goes, oh, they said this. And because he's, listen, we always hear it on the television programs, anything you, can, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, that's exactly the way the devil works. Everything you say, he records. And whenever you mess up and you say Sickness and death and disease and, de and uh, you know, defeat, those kind of things. He goes, up. Ah, that'll be used against you. Why? In the court of heaven, right? I know a lot of you follow that court of heaven stuff. It's not biblical the way that it's taught generally. But I'm just saying that there is a courtroom in heaven, and the devil does actually try to um, accuse you. Why? Because that's his job. And the way he does it is he uses your own words against you. <laughs> 